Hey folks, it's Stacy here. StacyRobinsmith.com. I am a dad in the burbs. And today I'm here to talk to you about the ugly drum smoker that I built. You may have seen part one of the, when I did the building of it. But now I'm here to talk about the process and a little bit of experience now that I've actually used my ugly drum smoker. Okay, hang on. We'll have a, we'll have a go at it now. First off, I'm going to start out by saying that it was actually it was actually a lot easier to build this thing than I thought it would be. All you have to do is drill. Well, number one, you have to get a uh, drum, and I went to uh, I went on Craigslist and I got a drum. So all in, I would say, I don't know, maybe six to eight hours of actual working on the drum. Uh, drilling and stuff like that and um, and then the next thing I did was I painted it I just I got some um, high temperature barbecue paint and I just spray bombed the whole entire outside of it and so that was it and then after spray bombing it and letting it dry for uh, quite a while, I don't know, maybe a couple days. I didn't need to, I just chose to. I Then I had to season the barbecue. The seasoning process was actually pretty cool. And all I do is took a can of um, spray oil. I used the Kirkland brand from Costco the um, Kirkland brand um, spray, I think it's canola oil, <clears throat> and I just sprayed the entire interior of the drum and all the uh, racks. And then I put uh, fire in the basket and I, oh, I didn't show you the basket. Oh, okay, well here, uh, I'll show you in a couple still shots of how I built the basket. In short, I took a, um, piece of expanded metal it was uh, 12 inches by 48 inches long and I curled it around like this and then I put a grate on the bottom of it you watch look at these pictures here and then you'll be able to see what I what I mean there hold on you can see them in a second here So once I had the uh, briquette basket, the charcoal basket built, then I could load it with briquettes and light a fire in it. In order to light a fire in it, use this thing here. You put a bunch of briquettes in there. You wad some newspaper up underneath here, just like a sheet of paper. You take a lighter, you light it in here, and then you set it down on the, on the ground. Pick a dry, clean area where there's no um, leaves or anything laying around, like I did the first time. Light it, and then within a couple minutes, the um, the charcoal briquettes. I used I used a um, hardwood briquettes made from real wood, and uh, they they catch on fire, and then they start going gray. And then you take this thing here full of um, burning briquettes and you dump it into the basket inside, just like this next shot I'm going to show you here. So they're turning gray. It means they're getting hot. You can feel the heat. So what I'm going to do... Dump them in there. And then... Um, this is another thing that I learned, I made a mistake when I was building it, is this thing here. These are the bolts, see that one, that one, and then one over here. Those are the things that support the grates. You can see this grate down in here. And in order to get the, I wanted two layers because I thought if I'm going to build a, uh, a smoker this big, I want to be able to cook a volume of, of meat. And so I, I set mine up with the two layers, two layers of racks. And what I realized was that 
once I tried to put the racks in, it wouldn't go because that bolt, I had, these are all, I think they're inch and a half. Where, and so then I changed this one, it, it, it would get caught on that. So I couldn't get the lower one in there. So now I changed it to an inch and a quarter and they come out now. On the outside, these are the valves that you use, I use to control the amount of oxygen. There's one there and there's another one here. And they control the amount of oxygen. There's, I got one on each side and around the back of it, I've got another one down there and I just pull that cap off. And that way I can control the uh, temperature inside the drum. To measure the temperature of the drum, I thought I'd be really clever and put this really neat looking gauge on here but it never seemed to go above 200 degrees and so I thought well that's really odd and what I realized is that it doesn't um, that's the probably the temperature at that spot but that's not the actual temperature in here where I'm doing my cooking this is the uh, top of the drum and these are this is the original where the um, where the, where they would have used for draining the drum. So I've left that um, plug in there, and then I put these uh, black iron pipe elbows, and I put plugs in them so that if I want to, I can slow down the exhaust as well as control the air intake. And so if I can, I've got three of them with plugs on there, and so. This was all painted, all beautiful flat black, but you know, it just maybe I'll throw another coat of paint on it after it dries up. Anyway, that's that's the that's the smoker. So my the the seasoning the the runs when I did the seasoning of the interior of the drum uh, went really nicely. And uh, I did two runs of actual seasoning it. And both times what I did was I put uh, some sausages in there. And the first one they turned out with a beautiful, absolutely beautiful layer of um, smoky bark on the outside. And then the second time, the second time when I did, when I loaded both racks fully, then they, they were good, but not nearly as good as the... Uh, not nearly as good as the ribs. There, let's take a look at this picture of the ribs. Those ribs. But the ribs turned out, um, I, gr I grilled the ribs for about uh, four hours on, on in here. And the last hour of the four hours, I, I, take, I took them off and put them, wrapped them in foil. And so that they were, uh, essentially steaming and then steaming and that's I, I, my, my thinking was that big trucks going by really noisy um, my thought was that the steaming would make us that that would soften up the the meat and the um, what do they call it the the collagen so that they would be more tender and um, somebody asked me uh, what's the cost for me? And I figure all in with the racks, the hardware, this stupid um, thermometer that I got that doesn't work, all the piping, the black iron piping, the valves and screws and nuts and bolts. I'm about $250 into the drum. That includes the drum. So it's about $250. So <clears throat> good fun. My ugly drum smoker. My good old buddy. And... Um, that's it for today. Stacy from StacyRobinsmith.com. I am a dad in the burbs and talking to you today about my ugly drum smoker. Be well, my friends. Peace out. So, next thing you do is um, I put, um, I, I just read about this on the internet. I put it. Well, that's not exactly how it's supposed to go, but um, we'll see what happens. Get up the trays. So you peel the instructions off, throw them aside. 
And so I've had a clean area to do this. That's a lot of oh, shit it. balls. Um, not sure that was, that was not what I intended. <laughs> I'm to film that, see what's going on down in there. Is it supposed to go like that? Hang right over there. 